Well, let's get more now on that news we've been reporting from NASA that two astronauts have been stuck in space for over two months will now only be able to return to Earth next February. Uh, Dr. Brad Tucker is an astrophysicist with the Australian National University. He joins us now from Canberra. Very good morning to you, Brad. How's it going? Yeah, pretty good. Listen, my heart goes out to these two astronauts who packed for like, I, I think it was like a six day mission or something like that. But they've been stuck yeah. there and now they're going to be stuck there until next year. How did they come into such a predicament? Yeah, that, that eight day mission has blown out to an eight month mission, which is always um, you, you feel for them. Um, and this all had to do with the faults of the thruster systems uh, on board the Starliner capsule. So Starliner is the capsule that Boeing built to essentially taxi these astronauts uh, into the space station. During launch, they had a few issues. They thought mm. they solved it. After launch, as it was headed and docking with the space station, uh, they had a number of thrusters fail and helium, which is kind of the fuel that goes through it, leak. Now, there's lots of redundancy thrusters, so you know they were always safe but required a lot of rework and configuration as they were trying to dock and, and essentially land the equivalent of uh, on the space station mm. once they got there nasa and boeing said well look we'll we'll look into this we'll figure out what's going on uh after two months of studying they haven't solved why these thrusters failed so five of them failed um they've gotten a few of those failure ones back online mm. the biggest worry has always been why did these fail and how can they predict and prevent them failing? Because if they were to come back down and they fail, that could be quite literally catastrophic. So at the end of the day, they've had to choose to have an extended stay essentially in space. Right. So now SpaceX is coming to their rescue uh, next year. This must be a reputational blow for Boeing, given their recent record on safety. Look, it's an interesting one because, you know, Boeing and SpaceX were were contracted out by NASA mm. um, for this commercial crew program uh, back in 2010. And for years, they were they were neck and neck. SpaceX was the the newcomer. SpaceX was the somewhat untrusted company. Boeing had a long history in space all the way back to almost the Apollo days. Mm. Uh, so Boeing was a safe bet. SpaceX wasn't. Obviously, that has turned. Um, their, the original plan for their human test flight, the one they're on now, Boeing, was in 2017. So it's already been massively delayed. So, yeah, the fact that they're not confident going down in Boeing is a bit of a subtle blow. Obviously, NASA's priority was the safety of astronauts. That's, that, that's the only thing that yeah. mattered. Consequences to Boeing aside, that was not what they're worried about. Um, but it does show just how quickly... The tides have turned in the way commercial spaces happen um, with new companies growing mm. fast uh, and doing all sorts of services. Uh, SpaceX has now become the, the partner of choice uh, for NASA. So if this was meant to be an eight day mission uh, on the ISS, it must be a little crowded on the ISS. Am I right to presume that? I mean, what, what happens with food? What happens with space? So, so there's usually always two missions going on, a US-led one that has four and a Russian-led one that has three, but there's always an American and Russian on either or to operate their equipment. So the, the space station can house 11. Um, mm -hmm. They've done it in a push when they swap over that crew. Um, but if there was four more crew intended to go up next month on the next SpaceX mission to rotate out, it would actually really start to get cramped. Now, NASA always has contingencies. They had extra supplies when they went up, this Boeing crew. Um, maybe not two once worth, but they were able to borrow supplies essentially from the other crew uh, mm -hmm. and use that uh, and then have resupply missions. In fact, a resupply mission um, led by Russia uh, just went up to the space station about a week ago to give extra supplies to the space station. Mm -hmm. So they've been able to, to work and shuffle things, but there's only a limit to how much shuffling you can do. And there's also a practical limit because there's only so many docks on the space station and the Boeing Starliners essentially blocking up one of those docks. It's like a mm. delayed plane blocking a departure gate. Well, it changes the planes and flights afterward. And that's what's mm. happening here. So they really need that Boeing capsule to get out of the way. So the new one, the new SpaceX capsule could arrive and business resume as, as normal because there's been a ton of shuffling to get this to work. Well, given as you've explained that these technical problems were only found after the launch, what does this then mean for future missions? 
So this is, you know, quite literally almost the billion dollar question because they have a capsule on the ground that they've been testing um, and mimicking the faults. They can't solve it on that either. So the question is, is this a random fault that has happened or is this almost a more of a system and mal malfunction requiring a new design? Now, that's going to be the critical case because that's going to determine the pathway forward. Now, they can get the capsule down uncrewed relatively without risk. So this is one of that big decisions by not forcing someone to go in there. They can get that capsule down to study it more. And if something goes wrong, which is unlikely, but if it still does, there's no one on board. Then they have to figure out, well, are we going to have to require an entirely you know, rework and design? Mm -hmm. That's going to be at least months, if not over a year worth of fixes. Then they'll need some sort of testing and certification that those thrusters work again. So they have to somewhat repeat this test flight process, which then will draw it out more. Mm -hmm. So you're not looking that of Boeing being able to carry passengers in this at least until towards the end of 2026, if not later. And this depends on what NASA decides to do. Does it want to keep pumping and supporting the program more? Do they go with another company? Do they just use SpaceX? NASA's always wanted multiple groups, uh, just in the case of something like this, if something goes wrong. Yeah. And there are other competitors out there. So there's a lot of then policy decisions that are starting to happen um, throughout the year.